have a ministry without meals. On the 10th, the trustees will be meeting, the 17th on church council, and the 17th will also be our first annual charge conference as a global Methodist church. All are welcome and encouraged to attend that. Over in the Wesley room, you'll see the uh, operations. Samaritan's first Christmas <coughs> child is set up. Take that shoebox, fill it up with treats for the young children, and hopefully we can help supply some of those smiles that we saw in the video last week. Uh, speaking of first, this Friday and Saturday will be the first annual conference of the Global Methodist Church here in our area. Allegheny West, Allegheny West Global Methodist Church org is the uh, website if you want to watch the uh, annual conference proceedings. It will be live streamed on Friday and Saturday. Pastor Lee will be sending out an email with, with that link if you wish to watch all or part of that annual conference proceedings. Other announcements? I hesitate because last week when I asked that question, it led to about 30 minutes. But, um, but you know what? I'm still happy we did that. Because if, if you only participate in this worship service, you're really not aware of all the ministry that takes place as, as we leave here. But all, in all seriousness, any other announcements? Okay, then let us quiet our hearts and let us pray together. The Lord God, we have come together this morning really not enjoying the rain outside. But we recognize it as a blessing. And when the sun comes out and reveals the color of those trees, it reminds us of the awesomeness of your creation. And Lord, we pray as we celebrate the changing of the seasons, as we come together to celebrate our worship this morning, be present with us. Be present with us, Lord, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. And now as you are able, I invite you as always to stand and sing with our praise team as we sing our two opening songs, Hosanna Praises Rising, Rising and the Lord's Prayer.
pray that the message of those two songs stay with you throughout the week. Or perhaps the morning in the fall, like right more than appropriate day for that. But most importantly, the scripture that is proclaimed and the word that is shared. May it stay with us, not only today in this hour, not only today until we go to bed this evening, but throughout the week. May people see the light and the presence of the risen Lord in the way we conduct our lives. Let us pray together. Oh Lord God, we have come together indeed to give you our praise, to give you our worship, to feel your presence, to hear you speaking to us. You are the God of all creation, the God that created all that has ever been and is and ever will be. You are all-knowing, all-wise, and we thank you. We thank you that you love each one of us enough to send your Son, born of very humble means. Parents had to leave the country because of persecution. But you came back, walked amongst the people, showing them how to love one another, reprimanding persons, and not only for them, but for us, you willingly gave yourself up die that horrible death on the cross. But alleluia, on the third day you indeed rose from the dead as you predicted that you would. Your promises are true, your promises are real, and we can trust if we only humble ourselves and believe in you. You give us the strength and the power that we need. Lord God, this morning, as always, some very specific prayer requests. We pray for each and every one who is dealing with illnesses, physical illness, mental illness. Be present with those persons, Lord. We pray especially this morning for the Wegmiller family. Ed is still recovering from a gunshot wound, and sadly his wife is not. But we rejoice that she has passed into your arms. We do pray this morning, as Reed has asked for the, her uh, grandson Henry had his surgery Friday. I understand things going well. And also pray, pray for the school district where her grandchildren attend. We give praise that the surgery for Carol Sarah Stockwell's four-year-old granddaughter, Violet, was successful this past Thursday. Doctors were able to get more than enough blood cells that are needed. Scarlett starts her chemotherapy on Monday. We continue to pray for her, for the doctors and the nurses that minister to her. And may she receive the gift of God. <coughs> Lord, as we've watched the news this week, the conflict in Israel continues. And sadly, it's not soldier against soldier, but soldiers killing innocent men and women 
And for the folks of Afghanistan, as if life were not difficult without the devastating earthquake. The ongoing conflict in Ukraine. In our own country, it's hard to understand the vile political rhetoric that passes from one party to the next. And we ask that, that their hearts and minds might be changed that those who promised if we elected them they would be statesmen sadly have become politicians. May you enter their hearts and change them that they might become statesmen to lead this country in the way that you had intended. <coughs> Lord, as this week, Pastor Lee and Marty attend this first annual conference. Be present not only with them, but be present with all who are at that annual conference. And may the work that is done there be one that brings honor and glory to your name. And that as we work together, People might, might know that you are indeed the risen Christ, and that they too might seek to follow you. Lord, for those things that remain on our heart unspoken, you know them. And again, we lay them before you. And we ask now as we join our hearts and voices together as we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on our earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom of God, and the glory forever. Amen. Again, most appropriately, our morning anthem is entitled. All my grain.
because the Rosemary Chose was for the <laughs> choir. So I don't know if that's the case. I didn't know if had that much power, but pretty powerful around here, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Our uh, scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 33 through 46. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and went away on a journey. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them in the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them, and they, they will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his, his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people who will produce fruit. He who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but he on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parable, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. May God bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. Amen. This time, if uh, I would invite you, as you are able, to please stand as we join together in hymn number 110, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
tenant relationships can be a little rough at times. Most often, we hear about these rough relationships that are caused by landlords that do not take care of their properties and are unwilling to fix even the basic things. They lure tenants in with, with low rent only to insist they live in dangerously substandard conditions. Such slumlords are usually in larger cities because it's easier for them to get away with such behavior, but you can find them everywhere. The kingdom of God has a similar problem. Only in this case, the problem isn't a bad, neglectful owner because God is the owner. The problem is we're just simply terrible tenants. We are terrible tenants. In our text for today, Jesus offers a parable about a, a rough relationship between owner and tenant. However, in Jesus' story, it's not the landlord who abuses power and fails to care for those living on their land. No, it's the tenants who take advantage of the landowner's trust and generosity. Jesus had entered the final week of his life. It was time for, for any doubts about his mission and his message among both his, his disciples and enemies alike to be cleared away. It was time to increase the intensity. So Jesus tells a few stories to, to spell things out. And in doing so, he turns up the heat some. The message was clear. God is like a landlord who has leased his vineyard, his kingdom, to Israel as laborers. The time has come for God to demand fruit from his workers. He wants to see faith in his promises. Repentance of sins and, and trust in his messengers. He wants his vineyard producing fruit that goes beyond the boundaries of the kingdom walls and fills the entire world with, with the goodness of what he grows. God's not a nasty slumlord. Israel, however, was a very unfaithful, unfruitful tenant. The time of eviction had come. The time for new tenants, faith-filled, Messiah-following, cross-focused tenants had arrived. Now, it's tempting for, for Christians today, the new tenants caring for the vineyard, to read these words as simply a rebuke of the old God. But that would be kind of short-sighted on our behalf. Now, if your landlord feels the need to recount stories of previous renters who failed to pay on time through, through parties that ended with police visits and who dared to paint walls without permission, he's not simply reminiscing about the past. It's instruction for you, the current tenant, to watch what you're doing. This parable is not a threat to us, but it is a highly instruct, instructive parable for us. From it, we can discern what God's expectations are for those who've been given the task of living in his kingdom producing fruit, and sending it into the world. This is a parable about stewardship. You know, managing God's stuff on God's behalf. There are two central aspects of stewardship. The 
First is what we've been entrusted with. And the second is what in the world we're supposed to do with it. What we have been entrusted with and what we are supposed to do with it. As tenants, we've been entrusted with two things. Two things. The gospel of Jesus Christ and our personal worldly goods. Both come from God. Both are to be used in service to God. The gospel is a message that despite human, humanity's universal rebellion against God's authority, God desires a reconciled relationship with us. God has pursued us through the sending of his son and made reconciliation possible through that same son's sacrificial death on the cross. Because of the cross, the entire world is now welcome to enter the vineyard and labor under God's love. God has not only blessed us through that message, but has made us the dispensers of it. Never thought of yourself as a dispenser, have you? But that's our job. Paul's command to Timothy is to guard the good deposit of sound, life-giving teaching applies not only to, uh, to Timothy as a teacher and to other teachers, but also to all of us who believe, who have been taught, taught the faith. We have been instructed to guard the good deposit that has been made within us. That's from 2 Timothy chapter 1. We must also recognize that all things, the clothes on our back, the dollars in our wallets, even the rented or owned ceilings above our heads belong to God and are on loan to us from God. King David reminds us the earth is the Lord's and everything in it in Psalm 24. God owns everything. It's simply been leased to us. We brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of the world. That's from 1 Timothy, in case you're wondering. Some of you probably thought it was from your parents. Right? Yeah. 1 Timothy 6, just so you know. We are owners of nothing. We are owners of nothing. But as we see in the parable, it takes more than, than simply knowing how blessed you are and who the owner is to be considered faithful. The jerks in Jesus' parable understood all that. A good tenant, a solid steward, does something with the gospel and their goods. They produce a crop. They make sure that, that both leave the vineyard in a way that brings blessings to the world at large. So, when was the last time you invited someone to church with you? How long has it been since you last read the scriptures with your children? Not at church on Sunday morning, but at home. Have you yet matured to the place where you can pray with a co-worker? Or serve in ministry? Is there growth in the, the knowledge of your faith? If called upon, could you defend your faith? What kind of, of crop are you producing with the gospel? How are you doing it managing your goods? Whether it's much or little, are you 
you seeking to grow what God has given to you? Is there anyone out there who could tell a story of being blessed by your generous sharings of goods at a time when their own vineyard felt empty and bare? When was the last time some of your stuff, of correction, God's stuff, that you are caring for and tending to, when has it blessed anyone other than you and yours? Are we producing a crop? I mean, be honest. What do we have to show for the vineyard that we're in? Years ago, the Village Voice in, in New York City turned the tables in the, the debate over terrible landlords. Paper ran an article noting that for every bad owner, there are equally evil renters. There are those who always need an extension on the extension on the extension of their rent. There's the party guy who can't help but play their music loud. There's the vandal who paints and put holes in walls and even does a bit of remodeling without permission. Not to mention the disgusting dude whose apartment is ripped from a reality television show about compulsive hoarding. There are slum boards in our use, but just as abundant are slum tents. How many of us belong in that category? Too many of us tend to live as spiritual squatters, inhabiting a kingdom that isn't ours and refusing to give God much of anything in return. It's an easy trap to, to fall into. Jesus asked the tenants, or just as the tenants in Jesus' story, they fell into that trap. And when the owner seems to be absent, off in another country or seated in heaven, one begins to wrongly assume that they're never coming back for their property. Or they truly don't care for it. And as a result, we live as though we can do what we want. With what we have. Yet we can't. We mustn't. Because it's not ours. If we were to write an honest posting about ourselves as tenants in God's kingdom, workers in his vineyard, what would we say? Would we admit that we are at times incredibly ungrateful, terribly unfruitful? Would we confess that we tend to live as if everything we've been, been lent by God is actually ours to keep? No matter what you write, the good news is this. The good news is this. Because of the work of Christ, God is glad to claim you. Because of the work of Christ, God is still glad to claim you. What kind of tenants are you? We've been entrusted with so much. We are the inhabitants of God's incredible creation. It's time to be a good steward. The season of, for fruit has drawn near. And God still expects much from us. We've been given the gospel. We've been entrusted with, with so many good things, material things. And no matter how much or, or how little we have, may it all be used to bear incredible fruit. May we use all that we have been 
loaned by God to serve others, to give glory and honor to our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And most of all, to boldly proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord of all. Amen? Amen. 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 I invite you to, sorry, I didn't give you a clue, ladies. May God always be our vision as we seek to live our lives, and may we bear fruit no matter where we find ourselves. I would invite you to stand and join as you are able on number 451, Be Thou My Vision. <laughs> Yeah. 